Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. If you're new to rose gardening, you might be struggling with the choice, amongst all the choices, of what's the kind of rose that you should put into your rose garden. And to make these matters a little more difficult, rose hobbyists, with all the best intentions, have categorized the roses into these hard to understand groups, named Grandiflora, Floribunda, Hybrid Musk, and so on. So I'm gonna to try to decode that for you a little bit today. Uh, in addition to that, there are some companies that produce roses that have given brand names to all of the different lines of roses that they use and I couldn't possibly go through them all in this video here but within the groups that I discuss I will discuss some of those brands and some of my recommendations of different roses. I'm going to do this by garden use so first I'll go through the smaller roses that you might use for containers or the front of the border then I'll go through medium garden roses large garden roses and finally climbers and ramblers let's tackle the smaller roses first because this is quite a hot horticultural area those where you can put them into your living areas like your deck and your veranda your patio and put them into a large container and get color all the way through the season and the technical term for those amongst the hobbyists of roses is that they are miniatures or smaller floribundas and I'll stick that name across the bottom as well now this group is filled with roses that are highly colorful full range of colors uh, they are usually cluster flowering so that when they flower they don't flower just with one rose they flower with a whole bunch at the same time and they repeat flowering all the way through the gardening season the scent on them can be a bit variable so you may have to stick your nose to one or two before you make your final choices uh, now amongst the brands that produce these there are a few different names so I believe that the house uh, Melon in France produces these under the Drift series and I think that Cordes has at least one brand that they call Veranda of course, one of the dominant ones around and most common in the garden centers you'll find is the flower carpet series. Now, one thing I wanted to say about miniatures is that they come in different sizes and shapes. What they're talking about when they say miniature is they're talking about the size of the flower, small flowers like this is Rainbow's End, which I just made from cuttings a few weeks ago and it's already this big. And it just stays relatively low and mounded. This one here, on the other hand, is called Warm Welcome. Warm Welcome has the small flowers, but will actually grow up to be an eight or 10 foot climber. So um, also suitable if in a large enough container to climb up, say uh, a veranda, you know, a support in your living area. So still suitable for the purpose we're talking about, uh, but a much larger rose than the other ones. Next, let's talk about the medium roses. And by medium, in this case, I mean anything in that range of three to about five feet in the garden. These include some of the most common roses that you would think of when you talk about landscape roses. Now, going back to that term floribunda, I called the, the small floribundas appropriate for containers. Larger floribundas would definitely categories in this group, things like fellowship, which I love a lot. Uh, Julia Child would usually be in the medium group of roses. Uh, now, it also includes one of the most ubiquitous roses of the 20th century, the hybrid tea roses. And when we talk the hybrid tea roses, I'll put some pictures up, but these are the ones that would be characterized by those tight buds, kind of the florist's rose in character anyway. Uh, not quite as cluster flowering as the floribundas that I talked about already. Now there's a hybrid between the floribundas, which are cluster flowering, and the hybrid teas, which are usually solitary flowering, called the grandiflorus, that have both large and uh, florist looking flowers, but they grow in clusters. So there's that too. I'm gonna to throw one more group in here that the hobbyists classify as the hybrid musks. And these ones are a group uh, that go back almost a century now, but are, are also exceptional garden roses within that medium size group, sometimes ranging into large as well. Okay, let's talk about some of the brands. So Cordes has a couple of series in this medium range. Uh, one that I like, the Sunbelt series, has an exceptional rose in it called South Africa. They also have the Eleganza series, which has Beverly, which is an exceptionally fragrant rose as well. Uh, one of the, the most popular series comes from Weeks Roses, or is marketed by Weeks as the Easy to Love series of roses, has some wonderful roses in there. And also, probably the most widespread grown roses in the world right now are the Knockout Roses, which are easy growers, cluster flowering, great landscape roses, and uh, grown everywhere. You can find them in all the garden centers. 
Moving now into the larger garden roses, and by this I mean anything that's sort of that five and six feet and upwards kind of rose. You can have hybrid teas that definitely make this size, at least in my climate. You also have some of the grandifloras, things like Queen Elizabeth, which is just a beastly grandiflora. I don't mean in a bad way, but just very, very large. You give it lots of room. Um, now, there's one that I haven't talked about yet, which are the David Austin roses, uh, you know, TM and, and R and CC and everything else you want to throw behind that to say that that's a brand name. Um, the David Austin roses or English roses as they classify them could be called in the medium category, but more typically in my climate anyway, in many of the Southern climates, uh, the David Austin roses are much larger and can almost be cl considered climbers or uh, large shrubs in the garden. Uh, some of the hybrid musks that I mentioned in the last group, so hybrid musks can be a bit smaller when you're talking about things like oh say uh, Belinda or Robin Hood uh, but when you're talking about something like Sally Holmes it's much more comfortable as a larger shrub um, so this is the group here that includes as I say hybrid teas grandifloras something that is called a shrub rose most of the uh, David Austin roses and some of the larger hybrid musks and finally, let's now talk about the climbers and ramblers. Now, climbers are a funny group because they include representatives from all of the other groups I've already talked about. Uh, things like even the miniatures have climbers in them, like the Warm Welcome I showed you, or Laura Ford. Floribundas, uh, Climbing Iceberg, Hybrid Teas have their own climbers, certainly. Uh, climbing Peace comes to mind. Uh, if you talk about the Grandifloras, like I say, Queen Elizabeth can grow that size. Many of the Austins, hybrid musks, I haven't mentioned noisettes yet, uh, but that's another one that I'll put the name of down below. Noisettes are a great group that are good for the south or good for more tropical places. Uh, so there are climbers within all of these groups and you just have to look up the habit. Now, this is the point where I'm gonna have to refer you on to some other reference sites. The best site around for looking at the ultimate size of a rose is called Help Me Find. Help Me Find is not a commercial site. I'm not trying to steer you anywhere where you have to pay a membership fee, uh, although I, I'm sure they would appreciate your donations. Uh, but uh, the place is called Help Me Find. It's like a Wikipedia for roses. So if you put in the name, uh, either by the uh, botanical name or the the, uh, the the official name or by the marketing name of a rose, uh, it'll come up with all sorts of pictures and uh, and descriptions, and it'll tell you the final sizes of your roses. Now, those climbers can range from small climbers that go some eight feet or so up to medium-sized climbers, 10 to 12 feet, and then there's beastly climbers that grow much, much larger than that. I want to clarify now just very quickly, what is the difference between a climber and a rambler? And it comes down to the breeding. Uh, the climbers are usually climbing sports of some of these other repeat flowering roses, uh, whereas uh, ramblers can include a whole bunch of the once flowering roses that are more closely related to some of the wild roses. Uh, so typically they will be uh, uh, only blooming once in the spring or summer, and then they won't bloom for the rest of the year. Uh, and they also have a, a, a slightly wilder growth habit than the climbers. So if you have some place on your property uh, that you just want to let go and go wild with a cool looking rose uh, that can be quite large and beastly, those would be your ramblers. All right, thanks so much for watching today. I didn't want to make this a long, long video, uh, but I hope that gave you some idea. And if you're looking for a more detailed description of some of these rose classes, I'm going to link a video here talking about how roses became what they are through the breeding of the roses. So I'll put that link uh, both here and in the description of the video as well. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave those below the video.